what you've done for me. You are everything, everything I could ever Thank you, Jesus, for your grace. Thank you, Jesus, for your grace. And that everything we do, God, is because of your grace. Thank you, Jesus, for your
Yay, Jesus. <laughs> On that awkward moment, yay, Jesus. Yeah, let's just do that. Woo! Thanks, Charmaine. Yes, sir. <laughs> he is awesome. You know? Is he one is she your desire this morning is what I wanted to say. Is he your one desire? He's the desire of the nations, but is he your desire? Come on. Yeah, I heard that back there. Out of the mouth of babes. Wow. Hmm. Thank you, Jesus. It says in John 1, 14, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. The glory is of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Grace and truth. John bore witness of him and cried out, saying, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. And of his fullness, we have all received grace for grace. This morning, of his fullness, you have received grace for grace. Lord, we just receive your fullness. There's a fullness that you have for us, Lord, this morning. There's a fullness for your people. Grace for grace. Yeah. Yeah, we receive that fullness. We receive your grace. We receive your divine influence upon our lives this morning. I just declare divine influence upon your heart today. Divine enablement and power, the grace of God, grace for grace, whatever you're facing, whatever you're going through, there's grace. That doesn't mean just to buck up and, you know, get through it. No, his grace is sufficient. His divine enablement, his influence upon your life, your heart today, is more than sufficient. And when you need more, there's more grace. It doesn't end. It just keeps on. Come on. That's God. That's God. Wow. Thank you, Lord. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We love you. And you know, there's even a grace when it comes to giving. Paul talked about the grace that's upon us to give this morning. He says, uh, he who sows sparingly will reap sparingly. He who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So let each one give as he purposed in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity. For God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace, there's that word again, all grace abound towards you, that you always, having all sufficiency in all things, may have an abundance for every good work. God wants to impart and release a grace into your life that causes you to have an abundance for every good work, not just in giving, but in ministry, in your home, in your family, at work. There's a divine influence upon your life being released. Hallelujah. You receive that? Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. There is. And do you know what? There's grace for you when you meet with the Lord. As a matter of fact, God says, He meets with those who rejoice. Isaiah 64 says, I will meet with him who rejoices. And you can meet with God even at the altar, even in your giving. Jesus met with a widow who gave a mite. Do you know that a mite is, is one-fifth of a penny? If you only have a penny today, you have five times what she gave. And if you came today and, and, and you don't have an offering, you just give him your heart, really. Say, Lord, I worship you this morning at this offering. But if you'd like to give something, ask your neighbor for a penny. That's five times what the widow gave. Because you might want to get on the offering this morning. Okay? Because earlier in the earlier service, I talked about how the honor I've had to go to other countries, and particularly uh, Nigeria. And in Nigeria, they bring their offering with dance. 
they actually come and dance. They know the principle that God meets with the one who rejoices. So they'll bring their offerings and they'll dance. So this morning, as you prepare your offering, will you stand up? And that's right. It's, it's kind of difficult for folks in, you know, white middle class suburbia. Oh, and texting. You can text and give. And I think they're going to put that up there. There's a number for you to text and give. And so we're going to worship him in the dance. And as you bring your offering, I encourage you to come with a step in Nigeria. They come like this. And you can come like that. And you just come. Come and meet with him who rejoices. He rejoices over you this morning. Come on. Let's dance before the Lord. Let's rejoice. Let's worship him. Now, here we go. Come on. Here's a Nigerian right here. God bless you. Thank you for your generosity. You know, you can dance up here. Just don't get too close to that edge. That's a drop. That's awesome. <laughs> Would you welcome Pastor Keith as he comes to bring some Holy Ghost announcements? Thank you, Pastor Greg. Welcome this morning. And uh, do we have any first or second time guests here this morning with us? Wave your hands. Okay, right over here. Wow, awesome. Over there. Anybody else? Over here. Yeah, wonderful. Well, in your bulletin, there is a connection card, and we encourage you to take that and fill it out. And if you go back to the Welcome Center, you see a couple signs back there where I'm pointing right now. Uh, we've got a, a Engaging Heaven, Transforming Earth manual for you. Uh, no, a journal for you. That's not a manual, a journal. And uh, there'll be some folks to meet with you back there. We'd like to get to know you. Also, the connection cards can be used to write your uh, prayer requests or your praise reports. And we just encourage you to do that. And uh, uh, just uh, join in, okay? Uh, clipboards should be one end of the aisle or the other. If you'd grab them, if you're sitting on the end of an aisle and uh, pass them, sign them and pass them along, just really helps us to uh, do proper follow-up uh, Make sure that uh, people aren't falling through the cracks and all that kind of stuff. Activation School is coming up real soon, at AS 101. And uh, there's a sign up on the back. This is an opportunity for you to be able to uh, learn more about the cultures of SRC. And uh, various uh, elders and staff are, are, are sharing it. Leaders in our church are sharing in that. Uh, it's a 12-week class, and uh, it runs on Sunday afternoons. And so we encourage you to get involved with that as well as uh, the connect groups. Uh, take out this connect group catalog that's in your bulletin and have a look at it. As my Scottish grandpa would say, there's thousands of them, okay? Thousands, yeah, there we go. A few Scots in the house are, are catching up on that. But yeah, there's a whole table back there. Turn around and look back where um, we've got a couple of ladies actually right back there right now. And uh, there's just a whole lineup of clipboards there take a look at the catalog, read it over, and find out uh, you know, what, what you would like to get involved in and sign up for it. We just want to encourage everyone to be involved in connect groups uh, throughout the fall season. And we have uh, a couple who are connect group, uh, are, are going to be involved in a connect group. They've got a, a video for us. So we got the sound on and ready to go for that video. Here we go. Let's roll it. Jennifer. Sorry we can't be there with you, but we're in Jerusalem, in the Garden of Gethsemane. But we want to invite you to our connect group. Our house is in Puyallup in the South End, and our group will be on Tuesday nights at 7 p.m. And we'll be studying God's Secrets by Sean Bolt, a life filled with words of knowledge. So please come sign up and join us every Tuesday night. Thank you. Hope to see you there. Yay! Hi, I'm Michael. And I'm Jennifer. 
Sorry we can't be there with you, but we're in Jerusalem in the Garden of Gethsemane. But we want to invite you to our Connect group. Our house is in Puyallup in the South End, and our group will be on Tuesday nights at 7 p.m. And we'll be studying God's secrets by Sean Bolt of Life Filled with Words of Knowledge. So please come sign up and join us every Tuesday night. Thank you. Hope to see you there. Right. Yay. So there's an enthusiastic couple. Uh, there's just all kinds of good things happening. And so uh, if we have various ones that are, are, are going to be facilitating connect groups that are here uh, this morning, would you just stand real quickly, those that are, are facilitating a connect group, either in your home or here at the church? Okay. There you go. Got all kinds of different ones. Uh, take a look at them and uh, go and talk to them. Find out what they're, what they're doing. And uh, it, it's going to be good. Uh, I can tell you, it's going to be good. Pastor Gray's coming back again. Get your exercise this morning. I see you jump up on the front here. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Seattle Revival Center has been partnering with Union Gospel Mission, UGM. Yeah, for some time, really, we have. But we're, we've um, kind of gone down this venture of joining with the Hope Van in outreach and led by Bill and Linda Boone. And so um, there's going to be another outreach, and it, the van can only hold five people. So get in on this. It's a, it's a blast. It's a lot of fun. I, I had the privilege of going out a couple of weeks ago for the first time, you know, with them. And it's uh, been a long time since I've gone on the streets with the UGM. But um, I didn't know what to expect. I just, you know, you go, and, and they hand out water, and they hand out food, and they have blankets, and they have... Um, uh, what, oh, socks, and uh, they have just things, and most of all, we just come with the hearts of love filled with grace just to, to share, you know, as, as the door opens, and um, we went out the first stop. There was a guy, his name was Dan. He came walking up to the um, van, and I noticed he was limping, and so I just walked up and said, hey, what happened to you, the guy? And he said, well, I got hit by a car. You know, it's dangerous out there. He got hit by a car, and he had a bad limp. And, and so I said, you know, could I pray for you? And he said, yeah, that'd be okay. So we prayed and, and then I asked him how it was. And he said, I don't know. It doesn't hurt unless I walk. And so I said, well, take a walk. And so he took a walk and then he said, all of a sudden, that's really strange. And I said, well, what's that? So there's no pain. And so uh, the Lord touched him and, and Jesus, right? And uh, so we got to pray again for the rest, rest of his body. <laughs> And his soul. It was fun. And so then we just hung around and, and loved on people. And it's, it's an easy thing. You know, you don't have to be an evangelist to do this. Just go uh, with heart of love and, and go to the serve. And then we went out some more. And then there was another guy that, um, you know, I went up to give some water to. And, and sometimes people just open up. And he had started a business, a flip your house business with his sister. And then it just went really south. I mean, it went really bad. And, and, and their relationship really got strained and, and because of it he took on a lot of shame and guilt and ended up on the streets and so I had the joy of telling him about grace and about Jesus and that you know we're the we're really tough on ourselves and God's not that tough on us he's not at all and we're more tougher on us than than God ever will be and so I got to share the good news and then really pray with him to receive Christ and so you know that's just the beginning you know and we're, we're called not just to make converts, but disciples. And so that's the neat thing about UGM. They stay with these people, and they'll take them off the street if they want to go and take them right in to a place of uh, discipleship and clothing and everything. And uh, even clothing, there was a guy who, uh, one of the drivers, saw a man with no shoes and took off his nice new tinnies and gave them to him. So he walked around in socks the rest of the night. Come on, that's awesome. So if you'd like to go, uh, they're going to go on Friday. Uh, September the 15th, and it's from 7 to 11, okay? And so it's, it goes late, but hey, you can sleep in on Saturday, all right? And so, um, you know, and I just encourage you, if you would want to get involved in this, go up and sign up back there. It's going to be a lot of fun. And Pastor Greg, there was uh, three, three people that are here this morning that were with you. Uh, oh! Margreta, Mark, and Sharon, do you want to come real quick and just... Where are you guys? I, I, yeah, that's right. Are you here? Oh, there they are. Come on, you guys. Or, uh, or at least they've been out on, on the search and rescue. These, I didn't know you were here. I'm, I'm glad you showed up. Come on. <laughs> so how did, how, did it impact, how did it impact you? What did you think of the whole thing? Well, I would just say uh, 
I want to encourage everybody, this is really a family. It's for all the family, and it's also for people that are working full time. Yeah. So it's not, you don't have to have a special license to preach. Yeah. You don't have to have a 10-year degree, you know, oh, my God. You know, you just be willing, share your heart. Yeah. And, you know, really the one that instigated all this is my wife. And she said, hey, let's get involved. And I said, like, well, you know, I'm working at Boeing all day, and it's pretty tiring. And are you telling me that after I come home, we're actually going to go on the streets? Yeah. And she really said, yeah, that's what we're going to do because that's what your call is. You know, it's not just at Boeing, but it's also being out there for the people. And mm -hmm. I just, I can just say, you took our son for the Let first time. Well, he can say it. Yeah. Let, I'm going to let Timmy share. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it was really interesting. Um, people on the streets, they're hurting. And it just, when you gave them something, it meant so much to them. And it was just amazing. It made their day so much better. And that just, that touched me. So. There was a lady uh, named Janice, and uh, I don't know, you had more of a connection with her. Uh, and so we decided to give her my sweatshirt, and it just made her so happy. And you went the next week, and she was yeah. wearing it. So, yeah. so anyways, this was the first time that Timmy went and did this. And I think that it was amazing, and you can bring your young people if you're there, if they're under 18, if you're there as parents, um, they can come, and you just have to clear your name online with them first. They do a quick background check. It takes, like, no time at all. Anyway, so Janice has been on the streets for quite a while. She's in a wheelchair, and she was cold. She says, does anybody have a sweatshirt? And we had these, um, the mission um, supplies these blankets, but they're pretty scratchy. And she was like, no, I don't want that. And so then I was like, my son has a sweatshirt that he was going to get rid of really anyways. It's a Alla Italia um, soccer sweatshirt from Italy. <laughs> And it's, you know, a great sweatshirt that's been in the family for a while, but he was willing to share it, so he gave it to her. Well, I didn't know if she was going to wear it or what the story was going to be, but the next week um, I went out, and she was wearing this blue Italia soccer <laughs> sweatshirt, and I took a picture with her and sent it to Timmy, and I think this was just a, a really good family experience. It's something that we're going to do, um, try to do once a week, and it's changing the way we think, because right now we're in a little small condo and when we came back after being out there with the homeless our little small condo seemed huge <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yes shortly as you heard once you start going out yeah. you continue going out because not only do you realize that you help them out it's really rewarding for ourselves yeah. to be there i can share some stories but um I think that was the third time I went out with you guys, and I'm certainly ready to go again. So it's, it's just a, an incredible blessing to, in a way, represent the Lord for these people. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah. Great. God bless you. Come on. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. And what, what better note could we move into a missions offering on than that? Because that's really what it's about, is reaching out to, to those who do not know Jesus and who need to hear that gospel message. Once a month, we take a, a, a special offering for missions. And uh, if you want to just prepare that, if you haven't already done so, uh, we will use this black basket for the missions offering just so we can keep, it, keep, it, uh, keep track of it. But God has just done so many wonderful things through your faithfulness in sowing into missions. And so just ask God what he would want you to do. This isn't a pressure thing or anything like that, but just that you would, uh, you know, be diligent in remembering those that um, are on our streets, those who are uh, around the world who need to hear the message of Jesus Christ, and we can support those uh, missionaries that are, are um, you know, facing lots of adversity in these days. Uh, as far as the spreading of the gospel. So let's just uh, pray a blessing over this missions offering as you prepare it. Father, thank you for the opportunity that we have, not only the opportunity, but the command that we have to go and to reach out to the nations. And we just thank you for each one who will sow into that this morning. I pray your blessing upon these offerings. And Father, that we will have wisdom to be able to, to uh, know where to sow into the various missionaries that we are supporting. We just thank you for that. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. You should come and give to missions. And would you give just a royal SRC welcome to our pastor Darren as he comes to minister the word this morning. Bless you, Darren, as you come. All right.
no stairs there anymore. Uh, yeah. I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. How are you? You doing good? Yeah? You sure? Yeah? All right. Awesome. Well, it's good to have you here. If we haven't met yet, my name is Darren, one of the pastors here at the church. What do you think about, like, the new stage? It's, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's coming along. It's not finished yet. Um, so, like, for those, you know... <laughs> I was joking around the first service, I said, you know, for some of you that think, like, it's done, this is like the new hipster look, like, it, it's called the raw plywood, it's the new look, you know, like, like we're hip, but we're not that hip, so we, we are, we are going to finish it, and, um, and, and it's, and it's going to be great, it's going to be great, so, uh, if you've got your Bibles, let's go, um, Acts uh, chapter 6, it's Acts chapter 6, yeah, I just realized something, um, i I left my trigger in my office. Could somebody run to my office and get my, uh, somebody that, there we go. Thanks, AK. All right, thanks, buddy. Um, so, we're back in the book of Acts, and, uh, and the good news is that we survived camp meeting. How many of you guys were here uh, all last week, or at least some of last week, for a camp meeting? Wasn't that wild? Like, that was incredible. Like, I, so, I woke up on Tuesday, um, and, uh, and, and, I, and I was like, is, is I think, I th- is it over? And I'm like, no, it's not over. Like, this thing's just begun. Like, we got, we got a, a ways to go yet. Um, and yet there was really a grace to do. We've never done anything like that before. Um, eight, days of <laughs> eight days of meetings um, every night and every morning. Um, and it was, it, was, it, was, it was amazing. How many of you just feel, like, energized and, 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 and revitalized and any other eyes? Yeah, awesome, awesome, awesome. <laughs> Um, it was nice to be able to go back into kind of a into kind of a, a rest, but we are gearing up for the fall season of the Apple Wine Awakening. Um, so we've got lots of lots of cool stuff uh, coming up um, this fall. It's an honor to have uh, Pastor Keith and Carmen Kippen with us this morning. Would you guys just stand and just wave to everyone? And these guys are incredible pastors and leaders. Um, and in the region here, some of the most um, generous uh, people that, 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 you'll ever, that you'll ever meet. In fact, um, I remember just being a, a pastor just for a few years and getting to meet them. And thanks, a, oh, oh, wrong one, dude. There's another one that looks just like it, and it's black. It's the same size and everything, but it's a trigger. Look on the couch or the things. Everyone say thank you, AK. Okay, back to the story. So new pastor, met these guys, and I, I would sit down with them. I'd sit down with Pastor Keith, and he would just say, this is what we're doing, this is what's working. And, he, and they were so generous with their time, with their resources, and then with their school. For all of our conferences, for years, um, they would send their school to, to, um, to help staff our conferences. They would sleep on the floor. They'd just give up their time and their energy. And so it's just such an honor to have this wonderful surprise, uh, the Kippins in the house today. And we just honor you and love you. I love everything that you're doing with Jake's house. Come on. It's awesome. Everyone say, so good. It's so good. Okay, everyone there, Acts chapter 6. Okay, awesome. Brian, if you want to just put up the, the, the first slide. We're, we're going to be looking at um, Stephen today, and, uh, and, and we're, going to kind of, we're going to do some review where we last uh, left off. And so the, we, we're in this revival dynamic. Um, uh, the Holy Spirit is breaking out on the earth. Um, the church is multiplying, um, and that's great. Um, but there's some issues because it's growing really, really big, and you have 12 leaders. Okay, and so uh, you got these 12 apostles, and they're trying to be good stewards of what the Lord is doing on the earth, but this thing's getting like massive. So there's this outcry from, um, from a uh, segment of the widows. This would be like the, the Hellenist widows. This would be the Greek-speaking widows, and they're not being treated uh, fairly. So the Hebrew-speaking widows, th- there's a lot of drama here, okay? But the, the, okay, so the Hebrew-speaking widows are getting um, uh, a special treatment for the meals, okay? And the Greek-speaking widows are being neglected. So there's this outcry. And this is what I love about the leaders in this time, is that they, they listened. These leaders, they listened to the, to the outcry, and then they gathered together, and they said, 
look, there's, there's, like, there's neglect um, here, and this isn't right. This isn't the way that it should be. And yet, um, uh, what do we do? Because like, we, as apostles, have to dedicate ourselves to the reading of the Word, to the study of the Word. Like, like This whole thing is going global, right? So how are we going to be global apostles, the 12 of us, and yet still be good stewards when it comes to the practical things like serving meals and just being fair and not, and not being prejudiced based off of what language you speak? You tracking? I mean, this is how, like, just how, like, it's so wildly supernatural and yet so weirdly practical at the same time. So here's what they did. They, 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 um, they, they, delegated authority and released opportunity for the first time. And they actually um, created a team of leaders, a brand new team of leaders. And, um, and, and that's, where, that's where it uh, brings us to uh, Acts chapter 6. Um, verse th- let's look at verse 3, because I want to take you back a little ways here. Um, Therefore, brothers, pick out among you, so we're going to recruit among you seven men. So here's, here's our brand new team. It's the team of seven. Why seven? Because everybody knows that seven is an awesome spiritual number. Amen? All right. <laughs> um, perfection. All right. So, uh, full of, so we're looking for seven men of good reputation. Everyone say good reputation. Okay? And are full of the Spirit and wisdom. Just say full of the Spirit, of the Spirit. and wisdom. All right. And... We will appoint them uh, this, this duty so that we can devote ourselves to prayer and the ministry of the word. And so they pick out the seven. And we learn that they pick out this one called Stephen. And so this Stephen is an interesting guy. Luke, the author of Acts, he loves Stephen. Like he, he, he just spends his time giving all these descriptives, all these characteristics, testifying of Stephen's character. And how many of you know that character is a big deal? Yeah. Um, now, I don't know if you've ever noticed this, but like when it comes to like spiritual gifts, like prophecy and miracles and like power and all that kind of stuff, like that tends to be what gets our attention, right? So if you're like, I know this guy, he's this crazy prophet. He gets like names and addresses and like, and like, and he can tell you what your great, great grandfather did and like all this. You'll, you'll be like, whoa, that's awesome. Where's he ministering? Oh, he's ministering just up the street. Grab all your friends. And we go, and, and you all go. And like, and like, and like it's, it's, the, it's the power of God that gets our attention. Yeah? It's the power of God that gets our attention. It's the power of God that sells books and like build, there's huge ministries built around the, the power. But how many of you know that there's, there's been a deficit within the church where you have crazy power but not a lot of character? And one of the things that I love about what God's doing on the earth right now is that there's a, there's a generation coming up right now um, that, that thinks the power is cool, but they're not going to be so in awe of the power that they're going to put up with poor character. I was with, I was with one, one guy just recently. He's this young guy, and there's a lot of favor on him, and I was just getting to follow him around, and I was watching as all these people, you know, there's just a lot of like, <laughs> it's just stuff going on, right, where they're trying to get his attention, and um, and then, uh, and then this person came up to him and bas- basically began saying, this is how amazing I am. This is all the stuff that I'm up to. This is what I'm doing in the nations. This is just on and on and on. Like, like, hey, look at what I can do, right? I can tap this. And, and then he, th- my friend looked at this person and then just began to read this person's mail to go beyond the power and to begin addressing this person's character. Because this person would not be so in awe of their gift that they were willing to incorporate them into this thing that they're building um, be, be, and, and overlook the poor character in order to have this person's gifting. Someone say amen. This is what I love about Stephen. Stephen is, let's just say, like a prototype look at a new breed, at a generation that's coming up that's going to walk in the both and. Everyone say the both and. Because I just so, I just so believe that, that, that the Lord's calling us into this place where I don't want everyone to be the guy that's like, it ain't about the power, it's all about the character. You know what I'm saying? I just, I, because we really do need both and. Everyone say both and. 
and, and, and that means that we will be a people that we absolutely value the power of God. But we know that it's possible to walk in the power of God and to walk in the character. And let, may I say, the consistent moral character of Christ Jesus. Because character ain't character unless it's consistent. Yeah? Yeah? And so what we're going to look at is we're going to look at Stephen this morning, and we're going to look at him as kind of this new breed picture of what the Lord is uh, doing on the earth. All right, let's, let's begin. Um, so we know in order to be a deacon, you had to have good reputation, and you need to have the Spirit, right? Uh, so, and that's what we see there. Um, let's begin in verse 5. And what they said, please the whole gathering. And they chose Stephen. Everyone say Stephen. A man full. Everyone say full. Don't you just love that word full? Yeah, here they found a man full, full of what? Full of faith. Faith and the Holy Spirit. And Philip and Procurius and Nicanor and uh, Timon and Parmenius and uh, Nicholas, the proselyte of Antioch, verse 6, and they set before them the apostles and they prayed and they laid hands on them. They commissioned them. Verse 7, and the word of God continued to increase and the number of the disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem and a great many of the priests became obedient in the faith. Okay, and to our new set of verses. And Stephen, full, there's the, there's the full word again, just to declare full, full of grace and power. Just declare grace and power. You see all these descriptives? Just, and Stephen, full of. And then you read a little further. And then Stephen, full of. Like I said, Luke is just really like impressed with this guy. Now Stephen was doing great wonders and signs among the people. And some of those who belonged to the synagogue of the freedmen, as it was called, and of the uh, Cyrenians, and of the Alexandrians, and of those of Sicilia and Asia, they began to raise up and they disputed with Stephen. So here's this guy, he's stepping into this supernatural grace and he's a deacon and he's doing crazy signs and wonders and miracles. Yeah? It kind of like, right, like, you know. So, it all, all, man, and let me just say this. The deacons here at Seattle Revival Center are off the chain. They're just, they're off the hook. I mean, like, I just want to... I just want to brag on our deacons. Like, you don't even get to hear the stories. Week in, week out, we get requests from all over the community, from, uh, how, uh, like, like, you know, from people that can't pay their rent, to people that, that are about to be evicted, um, to they can't pay the gas bill, um, to we need grocery money. Some of it's from within our communities, from our church, and some of it's from the greater neighborhood. And these deacons, they take the request, okay, and then they begin investigations, and they call landlords, and they begin doing the homework, because we're like really big on stewardship, okay? And so our deacons, they do the homework, they investigate these things, and then they step in, and we get to help out all kinds of people. Like, there are people that have gotten to stay in their homes because of your generosity and the deacons here at Sierra Vital Center that are engaging with wisdom, okay, and full of the Spirit with a heart of generosity. They're doing the homework, and I wish there was a way that we could tell those stories more often, but I just love our deacons. And now the bar gets raised so that, yep, we're, we're, we're doing all the practical stuff, but the... the the Seattle Bible Center deacons are also invited to, to heal the sick, to cast out demons, to raise the dead. Yeah, like, ab absolutely, right? And so this is Stephen, the, the prototype um, deacon. He's doing, he's doing this stuff. Um, and how many know that when you begin doing this stuff, sometimes um, you become a target? How many know that when you begin engaging with the Spirit of Christ Jesus, that means that you're railing to some degree against the spirit of religion? How do you know that within most cultures, religion is acceptable? The problem is never religion. The problem is the anointing. It's the anointing that gets you into trouble, right? And so this is, this is what we see here. They begin disputing with Stephen, verse 10. And they could not, I like this, they could not withstand the wisdom and the spirit with which he was speaking. Verse 11. Then they secretly instigated men who said, We have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and God. And they stirred up the people and the elders and the scribes. And they came up upon him and they seized him. They brought him before the council. They set up false witnesses who said, This man never ceases to speak the word against this holy place in the law. What are they doing? They're making up lies. They're making up lies about this guy. And then they said, for we have heard him say that Jesus of Nazareth will destroy this place and will charge the customs that Moses delivered to us. And gazing at him, all who sat 
in the council saw that his face was like that of an angel. So his face literally began to change. That was my bad, wasn't it? Did you guys watch how all that drama was playing out as I was preaching? Look, at it, it's right here. Love you, AK. Love you, buddy. You the man. You the man. So they make up all these lies. They seize him. They arrest him. And as they grab him, his face literally begins to transfigure into that of a celestial being right in front of them. And we're going to look at next week the Sermon of Stephen, the, one of the longest sermons in the book of Acts. So that's going to be a lot of reading next week, right? So you're just going to have to come with the supernatural fruit of patience next week, okay? Because I'm just going to be, <gasps> and, and I'm just going to be reading. We're going to go through that sermon. It's going to be super epic. Um, but so w- here we have this uh, new breed. Everyone say new breed. And this is what I love about him, is that he's, oh, he's, he, he's, he's, this, he's this ordinary man that's just been appointed and commissioned. This is like the very first empowerment taking place within the church. And this is the model that's given to us. And so here's what we're going to do. We're going to look at some of the characteristics and traits of Stephen, and we're going to kind of like contrast them to just kind of the default of the, of the human heart, okay? So we're going to look at like who this Stephen was, full of the Spirit. And, and then we're going to look at kind of like what tends to be kind of our default, so that we can see that here, here's an an invitation not to like worship Stephen <laughs> okay but here's an invitation to see this young man what he was walking in and then just to repent of whatever stuff's going on in our own heart that would like to just kind of like classify us as ordinary or classify us as just this weird kind of Western American Christian that goes to church on Sunday and hopes to make it to heaven yeah you good with that all right here's, here's the first one that we're going to contrast Doubt versus faith. Now, this is what it says. Stephen was a man of faith. And what's interesting here is that we, by creatures, we creatures, we tend, by the default of our heart, to be creatures of doubt, okay? And we know that without faith, it's... Without faith, it's... Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Then why is it that so many of us frame our lives in such a way where we can love Jesus, worship Jesus, go to church on Sunday, and yet at the end of the day, we don't really need His Lordship in our life because life's going pretty good. Is it possible to build a church or a ministry in such a way where the logic determines the outcomes and you don't really need the Holy Spirit? See, when, when we say doubt, I don't necessarily mean that, that, you, that, you, that you're the doubter, like the doubting Thomas in every situation. What I mean is that sometimes we tend to have to lean on our own understanding in everything that we're doing. And I think the invitation for Seattle Revival Center is that we begin to engage heaven for the transformation of the earth, knowing that the blueprints are going to blow our mind and that without faith, we ain't going to be able to stick around here. Like without, without, without the gift, I should say, without the gift of faith. Because how many of you know that, that, how many of you have ever tried to hype up some faith before? <laughs> believe, believe, I'm almost believing. Oh, I'm still not believing, right? You, can, you can't hype up faith. You can't work it up. That faith is a gift. But that we tend to set things up in such a way that when we first become believers in Jesus, it's all about the faith because it's a whole new world. Shh, don't you dare close your eyes. <laughs> but then over time, sometimes over time, our Christianity becomes predictable and, uh, and somewhat um, boring. And I think there's an invitation. There's an invitation from the Father to be like Jesus, okay? It's not even so much to be like Stephen. I'm not telling you to go out and be like, you know, just go out and be more like Stephen. No, it's to be like Jesus, that Jesus is the prototype, but we see here um, the ministry of Jesus beginning to duplicate itself on the face of the earth through a company of people, and, and we see here that here's a man that was full of faith. He was full of the substance of things um, hoped for and not yet seen. And what does that mean? It means that Stephen was running after some stuff that nobody else could see. 
And the invitation uh, for this new breed, for this company of people, is that yeah, it may be lonely, but that you're going to start going after some stuff tenaciously that nobody else can, nobody else can see what you're going after. And everybody thinks that, th- thinks that you may be going a little, little crazy, like you may be a little local in the cabeza. Eh? Yeah, yeah, see? But, but you say, I got that substance. I've, I've decided, I've decided that, that, this, that, that this, this methodology for Western Christianity that's been played out for generations... Like, I wasn't created to do that. Like, history is not my blueprint. The Word of God is my blueprint. The book of Acts is my blueprint. And here's this man, here's this dude that was full of faith. He was full of, the, he was oozing, he was, it was bubbling up, it was overflowing the supernatural substance Uh, I don't see it but I know it's there and I'm going after it I'm going after it and guys it's time to start going after some stuff it's time what are you going after what are you going after oh this feels crazy it's time to go after and look stop saying that that's spiritual and that's secular because some of you it's time to start going after some stuff at work it's time to start going after a new position and don't say that, no, that's about my job, so that ain't spiritual. I need to somehow get a job in the church. No, like, you, like if, you, if you got a job and you're out in the, it ain't out in the world. Like, you're just as much in the world in this building as there is no secular, and there is no, there's, there, is, there is you, a son and a daughter, with the kingdom of God inside of you. And wherever you go, the government of his shalom is being established. We don't need you here, we need you out there. We need you out there. We need you being you and the fullness of him. The bubbling up full. Someone say full. No, no, say it like you mean full. Just declare, God, let me be full. Full faith. Not with skepticism, not with doubt, not with the mathematics. I, I, I believe in logic. I'm not making fun of the brain. But, but some of us, we've been so anchored to a certain set and series of thinking a certain way. And therefore, we do the same thing day in, day out, year in, year out, getting the same results. And I believe there are new results. There are heavenly results. There are heavenly paradigms. I'm telling you, everything, every, everything can change once we're willing to change. Cities will change once the church is willing to change. Yep, absolutely. All right, the second contrast. Are you ready? Filled with self versus filled with the Spirit. It says, here's a man that was filled with the Spirit. And I believe that the two contrast. I believe that there is this um, self-help movement that is the largest, most prosperous religion in America right now. The self-help movement. It's, it's a religion. It's if you only knew who you were and what you were capable of. Outside of God. Forget God. You are a God. You can be a God. There, this, is, this is the fastest growing religion in, in, in the world right now. Is the worship of self. And here's the problem with the worship of self. That when the, when, the, um, when the fire comes, you will resist the fire in order to find pleasure. Why? Because the happiness is the end game, not holiness. So that when times get tough, you will be looking for the exit door. Instead of saying, it's tough here. This is where the fire is. This is where the resistance is. So sure, I could go to a revival meeting. Sure, I could go to a, a conference. Sure, I could move to a place where the Shekinah glory is just resonating. And I, I could do all that. But I choose to be here where it sucks. I choose to be here where no one likes me. I choose to be here where no one wants me. I choose to be here where my husband left me. I choose to be here where my wife left me. I choose to stand here. Why? Because this is where the fire is. And it ain't about my ultimate happiness. It's about this thing of holiness. It's about standing in the flame. It's about making up my mind to not escape, to not put on the parachute and jump out of the burning plane. This is where the pain is. This is where the flame is. This is where I will remain. This is where I will remain. I will let him burn. I will let him burn because I know that character is being forged within me. I love power, but I will be a man of the power and of character that you can trust what you see here. You can trust what I'm walking is. Why? Because when it got real, real tough, I didn't jump. I didn't escape. I didn't run. 
I remain. You are a people who remain in the flame. Just declare that I am one who remains in the flame. He, he's transforming me. Just declare that over yourself. He's, he's transforming me. He's at work within me. He's at work within me. He's trans. The Holy Spirit is a burning flame, a flame that doesn't come to devour you, but it comes to actually realign you, to, to regenerate you. That His fire, it doesn't destroy those He loves. It comes to reform and reframe those that He loves. And when you stay in the flame, you'll get reframed. Reframed in the flame. Reframed in the flame. That's a book title. Ref Everyone signed non-disclosure agreements. I'm running with that one. Reframed by the flame. Come on. I will remain. 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 I'm not going down. I'm not going down. I will remain. I, having done all, I will stand firm. Stand firm. Stand firm. If you're here with your, with your spouse, squeeze their hand. Just so they know, you ain't going anywhere. I will remain. I, honey, I will remain. No matter how weird this thing gets, no matter how wild our life has been, I will remain. Sometimes our kids just need to know that no matter where they're at, no matter what they've done, that you are a parent that will remain. You will remain. Sometimes your spouse needs to know, no matter what's going on in the marriage, you can squeeze your spouse's hand and say, I know this is weird. I know I'm weird. I know life is weird. But baby, I'm with you. I will remain. In the same way that your heavenly Father in heaven, who is perfect, perfect by the way <laughs> like God kind of has his thing together okay and look at us <laughs> like we're cool right like we're cool but look at God <sighs> the omniscient omnipotent everywhere present all power he is amazing and then there's us hey I don't think I like people <laughs> Ah. And what is this God? What is this burning self existent? What is this amazing? Oh, what does he do? He comes out, he stoops down, and he takes our hand. He says, I will remain. No matter how weird you get, no matter how theologically off you get, no matter what. Here's our Father that says, I will exercise my fatherly faithfulness within all your trials. We have a Father who remains. I got a daddy who remains. And no matter what, he there. He's there. He's there. That no matter what, he's there. He's there. He's there. there. There were times I let go of him, but he never let go of me. He's the God that remains. He's the Father that remains. Filled with self or filled with the Spirit. Here's Stephen. Here's one that, that emptied himself to make himself a vessel, a container, to be filled with the glory and the substance of heaven. And this is the question is, are you willing to surrender everything that identifies yourself from your gifts, your talents, your ambition, your dreams, right? all this stuff? Are you willing to completely empty yourself of yourself so that you're completely set apart to be full of Him? so that and whatever you say whatever you do wherever you go you say it's not about me it's about revealing the truthfulness of his beauty of his splendor of his glory and this is that Stephen generation that new breed that is emerging a people that will go to the stake to the burning stake people that will go into cells people that will be tortured people that will will say I don't care I will stand for Christ Jesus and him crucified I'll lean into the persecution I will not die knowing that there's a generation that does not know Jesus I'll say that again I will not die knowing that there's a generation that doesn't know Jesus say that to yourself I will not die knowing there's a generation that does not know Jesus and if you haven't seen the stats there are three generations that don't know Jesus in our country and I'm telling you our church services our good ideas our programs our methods will not unlock America. It will not make America spiritual again. It will not make America great again. We need a holy visitation. We need a holy habitation. We need the purity and the righteousness of Christ Jesus to come into the church. The church needs to experience the fire of God's righteous judgments so that everything that is not a Him will be burned away so that we will be burning ones that will settle for nothing less than Christ Jesus at his very best. Absolutely. Yep, yep, yep. I was watching, I was watching the... (sighs) 
Give me a sec. You guys good? You good? That was a lot. Let's try again. I was, I was watching the news this last week, which I've been known to do. Um, just trying to get all the latest Trump gossip, yeah? And just follow. I mean, how many of you didn't watch the news this last week? Like, it's, it's, oh, bless you. All right, if you haven't heard, if you haven't heard yet, it's crazy out there. It's crazy right now. We're, and we're in this, we, in this series where we're declaring this new vision statement over our community, engaging heaven, transforming earth. And I was watching, and I was watching the, 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 the racist riots and just the craziness that's taking place. And, and all of a sudden, they did this side, this little side story where this guy came on and he started talking about what's taking place in the nations right now. Did you know that there's like a martyrdom revival that's taking place in the nations right now? We, we heard about it even in North Korea where, where they began killing Christians this last week, torturing Christians. But it ain't just there. He began going into the stats right now. The world has, the world has never seen the amount, of, the amount, the quantity of people that are being executed because of their faith in Jesus Christ. And what does that tell you? That tells you that there is a Stephen generation on the earth right now. There is a new breed that they have laid their self down and they have taken on the spirit of Christ Jesus to the degree that they are willing to die for the name of Jesus Christ. And I'm telling you, we, ha- we have it. We have it pretty good here and now. Don't take that for granted. Don't take... Eric and Jenny McCoy. J- Jenny was just here a couple weeks ago. We prayed for her, her daughter. Remember that? Uh, she was having those... Remember, she had spots on her brain. We brought her up. There was, there was such a, a spirit of fear that was coming against that... Family, I don't know if you guys heard this, but, um, but they, got a, they got a clear report on their daughter. She's totally fine. She's not having any more problems with her. But that, th- th- we've seen that this last year with, with, with Joshua and Janet Mills. The enemy came, it was a freak thing that came after their daughter. Her tongue turned black. We've just seen families attacked this year by the enemy. But er- Eric and Jenny McCoy, they're in the Philippines. Their city is under martial law right now. Because of, uh, because of ISIS and the density of terrorists that are abiding there in their, in their city. So there's all these curfews. People have to be in at a certain time. And the, the strategy is that terrorists, that ISIS is coming into the Philippines as a gateway to penetrate the Pacific Rim nations and the, and the Asian nations. We need to be praying as the ecclesia, as the governing ones. Yeah, coming into alignment with the heart of the Father that those gates would be shut to the plans and the attacks of the enemy. But I'll tell you that ISIS is a, is a, is a um, anti-Christ spirit. That, that ISIS, that spirit of terrorism that's being released right now, that, that every three days we're seeing terrorist attacks, you know, all, all across the nations. And it's, and it's not... It's not a, an attack against religion. It's an attack against the anointed ones. This is the invitation. That we would be so filled with the Spirit. Yeah? And that it would contrast with the default of Western civilization that says, no, you are the God. Self-worship is the God. Your clothing, that makes you God. Your flash shoes, that makes you God. That we're coming into this place where it's just all going to be about Him. It's all going to be about Jesus. It's like we won't tolerate sermons that aren't about Jesus. It's like we won't tolerate worship that's not pointing our attention to Jesus. It's like we won't, it's just like, I can't be having that. It's all about Jesus, His splendor, His glory on the earth. That's why we're here, yeah? Okay. All right, let's look at the third one. Here's the third one. Bloop. The law versus grace. So here is a man, it says, that was full of grace. Now, how many of you know, like, we love grace, yeah? How many of you just, you love you some grace. Go and wait at me. Like, you know what? Even atheists love grace. You know that? Like, even radical, hating atheists love the song Amazing Grace, Yeah? 
Like, get me some bagpipes, let's fire. I I don't know what that was. All right, so, like, how can you... <laughs> keep going? All right. <laughs> how can you not love undeserved kindness? Undeserved divine kindness. And how do you know that grace is more than that? It's divine. Which divine means directly from heaven. Okay? Without a middleman. Directly from heaven. It means divine empowerment to not have to sin. And how many of you know that, how many know that you don't actually have to sin? Yeah? Sin, sin is a choice. So when you receive grace, you receive the kindness of God that you don't deserve to help you out when you've messed up. Because all messed up and messed some things up and fallen short of His perfection. Yeah. So we all need that kindness, and we all need that supernatural enablement to make wise choices, as my wife would say. Why? We, we tell our children, make wise choices, okay? Supernaturally. But how do you know that grace is more than just an individualistic application? Because we all love grace when it comes to us. But we tend to long for justice when it comes to others. Which means that when we mess up, we want kindness from God. But when other people sin against us and don't even apologize, man, we want it to go down for them. We want a heavenly showdown so that they go down. And we go up. But that ain't grace. That's the law. So we tend to be people that, that honor grace individually, but we want the application of the law corporately. And here is Stephen, full of grace, which means that he was willing to trade in that place of the law, an eye for an eye, to walk in supernatural grace. To the point of loving and proclaiming truth to the very haters who are about to kill him and about to stone him. And this is the invitation for the church, is that we would step into this revelation of supernatural grace and that we would be a people of grace. Because how many know that grace is countercultural? How many know that grace will absolutely subvert that demonic paradigm in our culture that craves and lusts for power? And we've got to be a people that are different. We've got to be a generation that's different. When I say new breed, what I'm saying is we've got to be a contrasting Christian culture so that when people look at the church, they don't see the lust for greed, for more, the lust for power, and a distorted, perverted worldview for sexuality that motivates. Because in the world, those are the three primary dominating paradigms at work. Sex, money, power. And when you look at the church and they're doing the same things that they are in the world, then why would you want to, why would you want to be a part of a church that looks no different than the world? Just, just declare this over yourself. Just say, Father, may I be an agent of grace that I can receive grace internally and then export it corporately. And the last one, let's get you out of here. Foolish speech versus wise speech. Now here's what, Luke, fascinating. He actually pulls out two positive characteristics in Stephen's speech. He says that Stephen was a man of wise speech whose speech was also full of the Spirit. How many of you need your speech to be reformed? <laughs> <laughs> How do you need your speech to be reframed? See, this is what I think, this is what I think the Lord wants to do. How many of you have ever seen the, the Christian guy on the TV speak in his mind? And you're like, dude, stop talking. <laughs> Somebody punch him, somebody knock him out, right? Like, oh, no, you're making us look so bad. Why can't Bono be on TV right now? Bono, you the coolest guy. All right, so anyways, um, 
I believe that this is what the Lord's doing. There's this invitation to come into this Christ-like, Stephen-like place where we are so hosting the Holy Spirit within our heart that when we go to respond, when we go to react, we slow down and we stop. We actually get out of our mind, we go into the Spirit, and then we come out with a revelatory response that people can then receive and then appropriate within their own hearts so that heavenly manifestations can occur because a word was released and stewarded and it brought about a manifestation of God's kingdom. How many of you believe that we're coming into an age, into an era, when, when it won't just be the silly Christians on TV? I so believe there's an anointing resting it, 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 on, and how many of you know it's not about age? I mean, I think, I think, I think, I mean, I cannot wait till we see 10-year-olds, 13-year-olds on CNN that are stopping, going into the Spirit, and then coming out with a revelatory response. God's heart being communicated over the airways and people receive it, they take it into their hearts, they appropriate it and kingdom manifestations get to, get to start taking place. This is where we're going. The people of God. Where we're not, we're, not, we're not judging people based off of their age, saying that at a certain age they can be used by God in big people church. Because we're about to see all the lines are going to get so blurry that you're not going to know if this is children's church or that's children's church or where is children's church. I mean, my Bible says the only way into the kingdom is through children's church. Like, if it don't look like children's church, you ain't doing biblical church. Like, if you ain't being offended because there ain't some little kids messing some stuff up, then you ain't doing it Jesus' way. Jesus loved the chaos of kids. He was like, ah, oh, you don't be so religious. Let them come to me. I love these kids. They get it. And if you can't be like them, then you ain't going to get any of it. <laughs> What we think is wisdom, what we think is adult speech, is usually foolish speech. Out of the mouth of babes, I will establish praise. <laughs> and I think that this is what, I think this is what we're doing. It's, it's an invitation for all of us. As we step into this kind of Holy Ghost empowerment, into this place of delegated authority, that's being delegated from the Lord and not from Darren, that you get permission to run. But when you run, you'll run with the might of God and the character of God so that when your story is written and people tell the story of how you ran on the earth, they'll, they'll say, there was one that looked just like Jesus. There was one that laid down their, their identity of self in order to communicate and revelate and reveal and manifest Jesus on the earth. And there is one, there was one, there was a dude that I knew who stepped into a chaotic, demonic workplace and smiled because he would not allow that atmosphere to define him, but he went into the chaos and began reframing it and declaring the revelatory perspective of heaven. There is a man that changed an organization because of the Spirit of God that was, within, that was inside of him. There is a woman that I know. This will be the story, your story. There is a woman that I know that would begin going out into the streets. And the Lord released into her a blueprint, a scroll, to see that demonic paradigm of poverty and addiction broken. And she went in and began doing supernaturally what it would take whole organizations, countless resources to do. And she began loving and laying her hands and discipling the generation of Jesuses. Is. That, that's, that, that's what we've been called to be. We say the body of Christ. It ain't about the collarbone. It's that you get to be Jesus on the earth. To walk in that authority. To walk in that humility. Not looking to take over anything. Looking to serve. Not looking to put your, not looking to climb a corporate ladder. Looking to find the person at the top of the ladder so you can figure out how to wash their feet. It's different. This whole thing is different. What we call power, the kingdom just says, it's, you guys got it all backwards. What we call authority, the kingdom just, everything's, what we call rich, the kingdom of God's like, that ain't rich at all. Like, it's all, it's all, it's all, it's all backwards. And I think that's the part about the book of Acts. I think that's the thing that when we read the Bible, we're like, well, maybe we're beyond that. No, no, we're not. 
It's an, it, it's an invitation to begin to partner with the posture of Jesus on the earth until he comes and changes the game. And I tell you, when he returns, he'd be all riding that white horse, fire shooting out of his eyeballs, a sword coming out of his mouth. That's, that's, that's called the game changer. And then you'll, you'll, I just got this idea, you know, I just got this thing that upon that time, if not sooner, we'll see, little samples of, of the end game, but that this whole thing could become inverted so that instead of saying, fire come, it's actually, we're like Christ and that the fire's actually here and it's coming out of our eyes as well. <sighs> it's not being taught in church necessarily, but it's being taught by Marvel comic books. The fire's here, coming out of here, coming out of here. The sword is here, coming out of here. The two-edged sword, Christ-like, <sighs> inverted. Everything's you know, here, out. So that's what I got for you guys. I hope you've been uplifted and, and encouraged and exhorted in the Lord. I, <laughs> <laughs> Hope you're not too bummed out. <laughs> um, the good news is this. It'd be all crazy out there. It's going to get more crazy, by the way. But there ain't no craziness in here. There shouldn't be. What's taking place in here should contrast what's taking place out there. Because the kingdom of God is inside of you. There's no anxiety or chaos in the kingdom of God. So we've got to begin discerning what's out of whack here so that we can begin contrasting what's taking place out there, so that when everybody else is freaking out, even in the church, you ain't freaking out. There's a smile on your face. You were born for this day. <laughs> Let's stand. Go and stand. Go and stand up. Okay. I got some homework for you. Got some directives. All right? Just go and put out your hands like this. And, and here's what they are. New breed directives. New ways of doing things. Receive faith. Just say, I, I by faith, I receive, I receive faith. faith. And I repent, I repent for being the doubter, for being the skeptic, for using my voice to be in opposition to this reformation that's taking place on the earth. I won't be the doubter. I won't be the hater. I won't be the grumbler. I won't be the, the complainer. I'll be an oracle of faith. I believe. I believe. I believe. And I receive this gift right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Faith. 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 Faith right now. 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 Receive. Receive faith right now. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Faith. 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 Faith right now. Right now. The gift. Gift. I just see like presents. Christmas presents dropping all through this place. Just receive it. Yep. Into your heart right now. Yep. 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 Faith. 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 Yeah. 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 And just declare I was created. To walk in the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the pure Spirit, the righteous Spirit of Christ Jesus is inside of me. Go and just put your hand on your heart. Just declare, I am a temple. I was created to hold His glory, to hold the person of the Holy Spirit. Father, give me a, a, a discernment and awareness to know what you're thinking to know what you're doing let me step into a new sensitivity I choose to begin this partnership I've been doing it alone operating out of good ideas I'm ready to start doing this with you Holy Spirit I empty myself of the best parts of myself 
I thought I've been pretty awesome. I surrender right now to your agenda, to your ways. I surrender to your perspective. Let me be one who walks in the Spirit. Oh, let us be a church that knows the Holy Spirit, that knows the person of the Holy Spirit. We honor you, Holy Spirit. Just declare, I choose to embrace grace. And when my heart is crying out for the law, I will respond with undeserved kindness, with unmerited love. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Father, I just pray right now for every person in the room that you would download to them a grace strategy that even doors that have been locked, that you would release keys of grace that are grace strategies that we would be able to give a, a response that is, that is so counterworldly that that grace would unlock locked doors and that this new posture of heart would change dynamics at work, in marriage, with children and parenting, if you need that, just receive that right now by faith. Just say, Father, I receive your grace strategies. Yeah. You got it? Good. Last one. Just declare this. I engage with the spirit of wisdom, with the spirit of the Lord. Let us be full of wisdom and let our speech be full of wisdom. We repent for our foolish words. We repent for reacting. Let us respond with the revelatory word of the Lord. In Jesus' name. Everyone in agreement said? Yeah. Awesome. All right. I love you guys. I think you're awesome. Um, if you need prayer for anything, you don't have to leave, okay? What we say around here is put your toes on the line. You'll be just fine. So if you put your toes on the line, what will happen is our prayer ministry team, they'll pray with you. They'll prophesy over you. Uh, the power of God is here. So, so if you need prayer, don't leave. Is that good? If you don't need prayer, hang out and then leave. God bless you. I love you guys.